lovelies! I'm Arielle and this is Maven Unmasked and welcome to my How to Bond with your new Tarot or Oracle deck video. Um, I just recently made my how to clear the energy of a pre-owned, swapped, or traded tarot or oracle deck video. So I thought I would um, follow that up by showing you um, ways to, and telling you ways to bond um, with your new deck. Because building a relationship with the deck is so important, especially if you're going to be using it to read, not just for yourself, but for others as well. You need to kind of know the ins and outs and have that relationship, have that connection so you can talk to each other and understand that language. Because that's what really, uh, what reading tarot is. It is a language, it is a dialogue um, between you and the cards and spirit and your intuition. So a bunch of different languages coming at you at once. So it's really important to bond with your tool, whether it be a pendulum, a tarot deck, an oracle deck, dousing rods, <laughs> runes, you know, whatever method, your crystals, whatever method of divination or connection to your spiritual tool is, um, this, um, me these methods can work for that as well. So um, the first thing that you can do to bond with your new deck, of course, is clearing its energy. Um, so using sage, cedar, palo santo, um, you know, putting a piece of selenite or black tourmaline on your deck, clearing that energy of your deck, however you choose to do that, and then charging the deck with your energy and your intention because you're building that bond, you're building that relationship. So you know, holding the deck in your hands and focusing and centering and grounding and, you know, telling the deck with your energy how you feel about it or, you know, what you're hoping the working relationship will be like. Charge it with your intention. Charge it with your love, with your energy, with Reiki, with your intuitive magical powers, uh, whatever it is. Um, that you want to charge the deck with. Um, you can even set, you know, a crystal. Um, this is um, Kunzite. So if I want to use a deck for self-love, I may place a piece of Kunzite on that crystal and really charge it up with that energy. Okay, um, so that's one way. Um, you sleep with your deck under your pillow. So if it comes in, you know, um, like one of these boxes, these hard boxes. This is the Lioness Oracle Tarot, by the way. Um, it may not be so comfortable. You may want to put your deck um, in a nice little bag or a nice little pouch like this um, or, you know, something like this to keep your cards in, put it in your pillowcase or put it under your pillow. Um, in my Tarot 101 class, I do have my students do that. And, you know, after the first day, they do that. And they're like, I had some crazy dreams last night because you were sleeping with your deck under your pillow. You're getting those intuitive messages. You're bonding with your deck. You're bonding with its energy. You're syncopating, syncing up to each other, um, as it were. So sleeping with it under your pillow, um, you can even put your energy into each and every card. Um, so I've got two new decks here for me to hear today. Um, the Lioness Oracle Tarot and the Light Gray um, Tarot, which I got um, used. Um, so these are really new to me and I'm <laughs> going to be bonding with them as I'm talking about this with you. Um, but pulling a card... Um, and putting your energy into each card. So whether that's through rubbing on the card or just and putting your energy into it kind of that way, allowing it to flow however it is um, that you work your magic that you do. Um, you can put your energy into each and every single individual card um, to bond with that deck, okay? Um, look through the deck card by card. This is typically the first way that I bond with my deck when I get a new deck. I go through and I look at each of the images, you know, and I take some time and really just look at the artwork, look at the detail, you know, gauge my initial reactions to each and every card. Ooh, this is really, really beautiful. But ooh, this kind of strikes me um, in some place. It hits me in my solar plexus in a different kind of way. What does that mean? Um, you know, what does this image remind me of? This reminds me of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, okay? Um, so those kinds of things. 
going through the deck card by card by card and really absorbing and immersing yourself into the world because um, tarot decks are just that. They are another world. Each deck contains its own universe. So you want to immerse yourself in the universe of the light gray tarot or in the universe of the lioness oracle tarot or in the universe of the Rider Waite Smith um, or in the universe of Animal Kin or Star Child or... Um, Akashic Tarot, crystal reading cards, whatever deck it is that you're using, you're immersing yourself into that language, into that universe, into that world, okay? Alrighty, you can journal on your deck. You can have a journal just for that particular deck um, and take it card by card by card. So when I see the moon card, what is my, um, you know, first impression? What, you know, I'm journaling about that. How does this make me feel? Okay, um, things of that nature. How um, does the way the moon makes me feel different different um, from the strength card? Okay, in this particular deck. Do an entry per card, if it were. Or you can do an entry um, on the different symbols you notice in a particular card. So let's say today I want to work with the moon and I'm going to focus on the Black Panther or the Jaguar, whatever you want to call it, or the moon, um, or um, if this is parts of the, the Colosseum or some kind of old ruins, maybe that's one I wanna focus my journal entry on, things of that nature. Okay, um, another uh, method that you can use is by only using this one particular deck for all of your readings, for your daily draws, for um, your readings for yourself, for your readings for others, for everything. Just use nothing but this deck for at least 30 days. Nothing else. <laughs> no other deck. <laughs> Just this for at least 30 days because you're building that relationship, that connection, that language, figuring each other out, learning to understand each other. Um, now, if you are using a brand new deck for paying clients and you're just beginning to build this relationship um, and you're not really understanding each other's language just yet, you may want to um, preempt and saying or maybe use another deck you're more comfortable with for client readings, but maybe just for yourself um, using only this particular deck for a minimum of 30 days. Okay. Alrighty. Um, you can pull a card a day. Um, take it back to beginning your relationship with, with tarot if you've been reading for some time and literally pull a card every day. And again, journal on that card every day or how, you know, is this card going to affect me for this day? Where do I see this in my life today? Okay, pulling a card from it every day until you get through the whole deck. So that's 78 days. It's two months and two weeks you know, two months and some change. Okay. Um, another way that you can bond with your deck is by reading the guidebook. Um, I am not big on guidebooks. Um, I love, I'm an intuitive reader, so I really love to just take the images and just flow with it. Unless I get really, really hung up on something, then I may go to the guidebook. Um, but for you, it may be a great way to bond with your deck, reading through the guidebook. Um, this one for the light gray tarot is really, really short. It's only um, about 30 pages. So you could read this in a few minutes, <laughs> um, but sit there and really just read the guidebook, familiarize yourself with the guidebook. Of course, some guidebooks are longer than others, so they may take you a while to get through. Some guidebooks are really, really, really rich um, in information and context. Um, so guidebooks can be a great resource for bonding with your deck, learning about the deck, the artist, the creator, if it's a deck that has a system that's not traditional um, to the se uh, 78 card structure of tarot or if it's an oracle deck, learning how the deck is structured um, in relation to the theme, perhaps learning about the theme of the deck. If you get a vampire deck, learning more about the vampires, <laughs> I don't know, um, a, 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 a deck about flowers or botanicals or herbs, learning more about those, okay? All rainy. So that's reading the guidebook. Now, there is something called the deck interview spread. And if you are over on the mavenonmass.com blog, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I do, with new decks that I get sometimes, do the tarot deck interview spread. Uh, interview spread. Um, the original link can be found over um, through Beth Maiden of Little Red Tarot. That's littleredtarot.com. Um, but she, I found the spread from her 
Um, but I think it's basically like a six card spread. I think it's six cards. Um, that's about what is the deck here to teach me? How can we connect? How can we bond? Um, um, what are your strengths? What are your limits? Um, what is the best, you know, way that we'll work together? What's the ultimate potential of our working relationship? Those kinds of things. So I really love deck interview spreads. They really allow the personality of the deck to come through. Um, I think it's interesting. I may do a deck interview spread with the Lioness Oracle Tarot and somebody else may do it. And the way that they're their, uh, their deck talks to them is different from the way my deck talks to me. Um, so very, very interesting. Um, but I love the tarot deck interview spread. Okay. Um, another way you can bond with your deck is to take it with you. Um, so if you have something like the tiny tarot, or again, um, a deck that you kind of can keep in your pouch and can just put it in your purse or in a backpack or something like that, and just kind of carry it with you, allow it to see your life and your atmosphere and where you go, um, you know, that kind of thing. But take your deck with you. Um, having it on your person, in your energy, in your auric field helps to bond you to that deck and connect you to that deck and its energy. Um, it's almost like a crystal, if it were, with the, that piezoelectric um ability that quartz has by rubbing on it and touching it you're creating that electrical that that uh that charge that electrical charge um and that connection and that has how the energies begin to syncopate and work together so that's beautiful um Another way is you can go through your deck card by card and say okay I really like this card and like eh, I don't really like this card what are your favorites? Put your favorite cards um, in one pile and then the cards that you're kind of like, oh, or create a small, a strong emotional reaction in you and a different pile and then kind of go through them one by one and journal about them, write about them, think about them, um, you know, whatever it is. Really think about what it is that strikes me. What do I like? What? Why does this give me, you know, give me a little bit of anxiety or put me in a certain mood or take me to a certain place or a certain memory or whatever it is um, because artwork can do that to us and for us so um, going through the deck and determining what are your favorite cards and what are not and why getting in tune with that getting in tune with yourself okay um, maybe a little bit of shadow work in there too okay um images that are really striking or may be offensive to you for whatever reason and asking why um you can also use your deck for like an instagram challenge you know um a monthly challenge that um some people do over on instagram where it's like for 30 days you know here's your challenge for 30 days and you're gonna pull a card um for love and pull a card for how can you um, show more gratitude or appreciation to someone today, things like that. Um, you know, those 30 days or 31 day challenges that people do every month. Um, but that is a way to bond with your new deck. Okay, and a fun way too. Um, you can also put your deck on your altar. And this is a really, really simple way. Um, or put it on your bedside table. Um, somewhere you see it, you know, when you go to, to your spiritual place, when you go into your worshiping um, mode, into that sanctified, holy, sacred space, um, and having that deck there and present. Or before you go to bed and having your deck there, seeing it before you go to bed or seeing it first thing when you wake up in the morning, that connection um, can be very very beautiful and very important. Okay, meditating on each card. So that's a little bit different than journaling on each card. When you meditate on the card, you really go into the card and become one with it and immerse yourself in that image. So for this, if I was going to meditate on this card, um, maybe I would hold this image in my head and that's where I would start and then go on um, a journey, a mind journey, a journey in my mind through strength. So if I'm sitting there observing the cougar, um, what am I seeing? What is the cougar doing? Or if I am the cougar and I am strength um, and I see myself surrounded in this beautiful rose bush, what am I doing? Okay, um, meditating on the card like that or meditating on what is strength, the strength card is a great way um, to bond with your new deck. You can also learn about the spiritual or historical aspects of your deck, okay? So what I mean by that is, let's say, um, for example, um, the Santa Muerte Tarot, maybe learning a little bit more about Santa Muerte, um, or if you have a gods and goddesses deck, learning more about the deities and that. Maybe it's um, traditional to just the Egyptian pantheon, learning more about um, the Egyptian pantheon. Um, I'm trying to think. 
um, of a good example, I'm like, let me take a look at my desks, um, decks over here and see if I can think of something better. Um, do, 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 do. Let me think, let me think. Okay, um, or maybe, for example, the Wildwood Tarot, um, since that deck has a lot of um, shamanic um, or druidic aspects to it, learning more about that culture and that history um, and, you know, shamanic energy and those aspects in that culture and, you know, how things work and, and all of those things. So, really delving into the history, the spiritual and historical context of your deck. Um, or maybe you have a deck that, you know, was originally created in the 1400s or something like that. I don't know. Learning more about the time that the deck was created in or the culture with which the deck was created in. For example, I have the Dreamtime Reading Cards by Laura Bowen. Um, those have a lot of Aboriginal um, um, themes and art and, and animals related to Australia. So learning more about that culture and that region um, of the world would be helpful in bonding with that deck. So you have some kind of context and background. Okay. Um, and then the, probably the real, real easiest two ways to bond with your deck um, are quite simple. They are shuffling your deck so really just shuffling it, getting that energy moving and flowing, putting your energy into it because you're creating that movement, that flow. You're holding the cards as you shuffle. Your energy is going into it. And then just pulling cards and reading with it. Um, those are just some of my favorite ways to bond with your new tarot or oracle deck. Um, if I missed any ways, if there's any ways that you would like to share with me about how you bond with your new decks, whether it's laying Chris, your favorite crystals on them or sleeping with them under your pillow or doing something else altogether, taking them out on the town um, to read in a new bar or new restaurant or out at the park, um, you know, whatever it is, please just leave a comment below. I would love to hear how you bond with your deck. And if there's any questions that you have that you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below and I just may make a video. But have a great one bonding with your new decks, lovelies. Bye. And please be sure to check out my website, www.mavenunmasked.com, if you would like to book a reading with me. Take care. Bye now.